my mom, I've seen her kind of work different jobs. Um, not like every two years or anything like that. But, you know, if she's unhappy or feels like she's undervalued, she'll leave a job. And then COVID happened. And, you know, then she had to find something else. And then she was undervalued. So it's I think it is a product of what you see. But also the the past five years in the world have kind of been traumatizing. And so I think that's where it can come across as selfish, but it's really about self-sustaining yeah. and just, just make like, I, I can only look out for me at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The, the trauma that people experienced with, uh, with COVID um, it, I, being in the medical field, being a physician, I've been able to get into people's heads about it and, you know, mm-hmm. And so I get to hear a lot of things that, you know, you guys probably don't uh, about the the fears of of people and what they've experienced. Uh, Things have changed. People have changed. We are, you know, we're meaner. It is, um, there is a lot of, uh, a lot of very, mm, I don't know if selfish is the right word. Maybe you guys can help me be a little more eloquent about this, but, <clears throat> but there is a, a very self-protective mode. <clears throat> and I think that when your, when your stability, when your finances, and I know I've been through a very, very difficult time where I lost, you know, I was a millionaire and I lost Everything had to start completely over. Many people do that. I'm not singing a a sad song, but many people do that. But that happened to many people during COVID. And people came out on the other side extremely uh, fearful and anxious about what could happen in the future, what the future could bring. There was a lot of joy that was stolen from people as well. I'll tell you, my daughter, you know, it was her senior year of high school when Mm -hmm. the shutdown happen. And so she's like, I didn't get prom. I didn't get to walk the stage. I didn't get to do all these life things. You know, my, my friends, uh, didn't get to see my friends for a year. And, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of children, uh, were held out of school at a very, very important developmental time, uh, mm-hmm. while the parents were losing jobs and things. And so there's a lot of distrust. There's a lot of uh, emotional instability. So, <clears throat> That that is going to shape a generation, and we're going to see, you know, we're going to see the fallout from that, and and uh, see how people's spirit comes out, uh, and ability to cope uh, with problems uh, from the future on here based on that. It's going to be very very interesting. And I think society has kind of pushed this like self sustaining idea as well, because I feel like it used to be, and a lot of other cultures still kind of live this way. It used to be. You know, you had one big house with your grandma, your aunts, your uncles, whereas, you know, nowadays they really kind of push that like nuclear family where it's like you, your spouse and your children. And then that's it. And so, you know, you're you're kind of taught to like, I'm just going to protect me and mine and not really think as much about the other people that may be involved, too. Not that I'm like, you know, excusing, you know, some of the selfishness that is portrayed. But, you know, I do think you know, since we're talking about society and generation, like how that, how that can impact someone's like viewpoint of just how life is supposed to be structured. Mm -hmm. There's a lack of community. Um, I know uh, my husband's family is from overseas and there's a very different thought process about, Mm -hmm. uh, about how you do things as a community and Mm -hmm. you think about, you know, giving to uh, giving to uh, the the um, the underserved. Um, you know, you think about how your decisions and what you're doing impacts you know the people and the neighbors around you. You you know, you see somebody else. Uh, I remember when I was a kid and and uh, I lived in a very very small farming town. And if Uncle somebody got sick and couldn't tend his crop, then the community came in and tended the crop and took care of it for them. And and that's the that's the thinking overseas. It's a very community oriented. Um, uh, way of taking care of each other. And here we're very, very different from that. You know, that is your problem. I've got my own. I am taking care of me and mine. And, uh, you know, and we do things for uh, for us. You know, we don't do things thinking about the community and the culture around us. And yeah. I, I think that's a very, uh, I think that in the end is going to get us into trouble. I think that's part of the reason why 
Uh, and I make the joke with my patients these days because everybody's so stressed and exhausted. I'm like, you know, when did the American dream turn into the American nightmare? And I think it is based, uh, some of it is based on the fact that we have lost that sense of community, you mm -hmm. know, of caring for somebody else and what they're going through and uh, trying to assist and help and putting yourself in somebody else's shoes and uh, uh, and trying to uh, help. It's like, a, that is your problem. You, you find your own resources. You do your own thing. Uh, I've got enough on my plate right now.